Daniel Mills sadly passed away on New Year's Day of 2013. It was down to a condition known as Sudden Adult Death Syndrome. The frequency of the condition isn't fully known, as most sudden deaths are put down to accidents. Research has shown and indicated that 500 deaths a year in the United Kingdom are down to Sudden Adult Death Syndrome. The foundation was raised in Danny's name after tremendous support from the community and throughout. Danny was a kind and modest gentleman. He was my best friend and one of the funniest people I've ever met. Danny was one of a kind to me and I just wish he could have been that special part of my life for a lot longer. Danny was irreplaceable. He was my best friend and he always will be and I just can't wait to see him. Danny was always at the centre of everything within our group of friends. He dedicated his life to his friends and family and we just hope that we can make him proud and fulfil his legacy. Everybody's son's perfect but he was one of the most caring, loving, funniest characters that God ever put on this earth and we just miss him so much and we loved him so much. Daniel was my firstborn big son. Um, he was my work partner and without a doubt he was definitely my very, very best friend. Around the time whenever Danny passed, we rallied our support together to see how we could really help his, his family out. And we discovered the extensive cost of how much it is to actually bury someone. And so what we did was put our heads together and thought about how we could raise some cash to help offset that massive cost. And as a result of that, um, even after the funeral, people were still approaching us, wanting to donate money. And we thought, well, what exactly can we do to this? Do with the money. It got to the point where um, it was decided upon a, a charity to help spread awareness about the condition as well as possibly purchasing some equipment that would help save people's lives. It's actually absolutely done fantastic so it has. Um, we've had a uh, first fundraiser we had was the night of the races and um, the support we had from people was fantastic um, raised a really a lot of money there. Um, we're also having another event very soon. It's on the 5th of October and it's the Gala Ball. Um, my part in that is running around shops, going in and asking them to donate towards raffles, ballots, and it's been fantastic the help of all the shops have given us. The support's been unbelievable. Um, it's not like anything I don't think any of us could have predicted. Bill Banger Academy have, have raised £1,250 for us in a non uniform day in regards to the different smaller companies to even larger ones. Even the gym approached this, it's currently being our main sponsor. It's held stuff like fun days, raised money for us, taking money for bands. Um, the list goes on and on and on. At the time, we were looking for a charity. Um, my girlfriend came and told me a wee bit about it. I had heard stuff um, on the news about the loss of Dan. I was very touched just by what uh, Roshina told me. Um, then. I had to think about it to myself, but it's hard to have the approach and things I got there. Um, it was in my mind for about two or three weeks, just researching myself online, trying to find a wee bit more about Danny, trying to find a bit more about the charity, um, and who all was involved. And then I was lucky enough that we approached the guys, um, and they came down to see me. Now, I was overwhelmed by them coming to me um, that night, speaking to me, and just what I heard, I was touched, but I had made my mind up. Uh, days before that, that they, this was the charity that I wanted to support and take it further um, and help the guys out as much as we possibly could. It's a great cause to support. Um, you seen yourself there last year from Beast Mwamba, first of all, with a heart problem and how, how lucky he was and his life to see it. Um, unfortunately, others have not been that lucky. Um, this is something now that it's a great cause to athletes that we're not picking up on. Uh, first of all, we're on the bank holiday and um, we've done a charity football event, fun day. So I had the legs in the stalls and uh, we had the team from the gym uh, play against the guys from the charity as well, friends and family. Um, unfortunately, they beat us um, on the day, but uh, well deserved effective for them. Something we really enjoyed because it was something that um, I was very touched by when uh, Frankie uh, came and approached me, just the fact that uh, you presented the trophy, it's on a really special moment for me. 
We initially used social media to really get the word out there about the foundation and in response we had a number of media outlets get in contact with us and looking more locally um, to start off with we had the Bank of Spectator and they've really done a number of stories now and have came to a lot of our fundraising events and helped us get the word out around Bangor and also looking towards ours in Hollywood as well. And then we were lucky as well at the Belfast Telegraph also approached us and gave us a three page spread and it really helped us spread the word throughout um, not only Bangor and the surrounding areas but the whole of Northern Ireland and it really gave us the, the best coverage we could get. And then looking onto radio as well, we were approached by U105 and they gave us a decent slot where we could come on and talk about Dan. Well Danny was just your everyday, you know, young guy. He was, he was only 21 years of age when he passed away. He was full of life, he had no underlying medical conditions that anyone knew of. He was just a healthy guy who loved, you know, hanging out with his friends. He actually worked with his dad and he loved his job as well. He was just, you know, a normal person with, you know, no symptoms, no nothing. And then out of the blue there on New Year's Day this year, we all were shocked by the news that he'd passed away. It's what's called sudden adult death syndrome and it was an undiagnosed heart problem. Yes, so it was all to do with an underlying heart problem, which if more advanced screening programs were maybe in place that maybe we could have detected, but you know, People don't know to get checked out, especially when you're at such a young age of 21, you would never expect yourself to maybe have a heart problem or something, it's just not the type of thing that people think, so and what but, we've now done. But very sadly, we're, we've, we've risen, had awareness raised of this because um, it's happened to a few sports people and, and it, it is something that is, is so terribly sad that, as you say, goes undiagnosed and, and because they're at such a young age, they'll, they'll not assume that there is a problem with their heart. Craig and Danny were old childhood friends and whenever Craig found out about exactly what happened to Danny he did everything he could in, a, in order to promote our cause in the charity. Whether that was involving his teammates having signed jerseys made for uh, raffles or to even having some wrist tape with Danny's name on it whenever he was participating in the Six Nations. Fortunately Craig went on to score a try and there was a, a really famous shot of him celebrating with Danny's name which was just fantastic because it spiked the popularity around whether it was the Facebook page or even on the donation site itself. That's actually meant everything to us because uh, we were so, uh, so shell-shocked at the time that we didn't really know what way to turn and um, we knew that Daniel had a great bunch of pals but we didn't really know to what extent you know, that ran and it's only through all this um, you know what they've done for us that um, we've really learned to appreciate that and we've really learned to appreciate how good friends can be.